Okay, I've been going crazy for revisiting old memories of Nano Loop. I'm using it on a ROM cartridge. This is the Nano Loop 2. And I wanted to sync, and I made a quick cable. You can sync with MIDI or sync with these Volca ins. So I'm stoked to see what it's like to sync Nano Loop with a Volca. There's already a schematic out there to hook the link port to MIDI on the Nano Loop website. It turns out there isn't one for this 8th inch jack, but you can hook it up the same as the MIDI. So here let me show you on screen. For the 8th inch jack, it's different than the one for LSDJ. The Nano Loop one is actually connected to the same pins as the Nano Loop MIDI. See this shows you which pins go to which. And when you have it hooked up right, and you have Nano Loop in analog mode and analog in half, then it works great. To sync out, you hit B and the shoulder button, and then while you're holding B, you hit select and you switch it to A. Then you hold down A and hit down, and then it does A analog out in half time. If you want to use the MIDI output, you make sure this is saying E instead of the BPM, which is hitting B and the shoulder button. Then you hit B and select till this is the M. And when it's the M or the A, you hit start to get it started. And here I'm going to move this over to MIDI and you'll see it works similarly. And no matter what I set the tempo to, it stays in sync. So either of these will work um, all the time. And this pinout for this 8th inch jack for Nano Loop is only available here, exclusive. Here we are syncing to a regular Game Boy. You needed to be in C mode for Nano Loop 1 for the regular Game Boy. And I needed to add a 68k resistor between the clock pin on the jack and the tip. Ow, poor burning hot soldering irons right there. I needed to add a 68k resistor between the clock pin on that jack and the actual tip of this fella. But I didn't do it with the Game Boy Advance cable, just the regular Game Boy one. And it syncs. I didn't get to sync with the MIDI with the regular Game Boy though. I also found the Game Boy to be a little glitchier, missing or skipping a beat every once in a while, but then usually catching back up. Here's the final result. I just heat shrinked the connections and put a zip tie on them, and I put them all coming out of one side. That way when any two are pulled, it doesn't pull them apart linearly. It's way stronger.